Up next, we have probably my favorite panel of the weekend, Bitcoin Core Dev Panel, featuring uh, Amit, Amitya Atar, Atarwar, John Newberry, Peter Willow, Corey Fields, and moderated by Ethan Hillman. Oh, thanks. Um, so, just have the uh, panelists first uh, provide the background. Um, let's see, Corey, uh, Corey was there. Let's, uh, let's just uh, start off with having the panelists uh, uh, provide a, a brief summary of their um, background and their uh, bio. Um, and we'll wait to see if Corey can get connected. Okay, hi, uh, can you hear me? Oh. My name is Amidi and I work at Zappo and I have the privilege of working on Bitcoin Core on a daily basis. Um, I'm a pretty recent contributor. I, uh, proposed my first change set in like January of 2019, so it's been a little bit over a year. So I feel like I'm still just getting started, but I'm learning a lot and having a really good time doing it. Uh, so thank you for having me. It's uh, quite an honor to be on this panel and sharing a stage with this group. Hi everyone, I'm John. Ooh, I work at Jenko Labs as a Bitcoin protocol engineer. Um, I also feel like I'm very privileged that I get to work on what I think is the most interesting project in the world. Um, I spend my time partly working on Bitcoin Core, so writing code, testing and re reviewing code, um, but also I spend a lot of my time working on educational initiatives and getting people into Bitcoin development. Hi, uh, I'm Peter. Um, I've been working on Bitcoin Core, I think since around 2011. Uh, first, in uh, just in my spare time. Later, I was fortunate enough to uh, do that through Blockstream, where I've been uh, employed for the last five years. Um, I, uh, I work on Bitcoin Core, uh, do maintenance there. I uh, also work on, more lately, I work more on uh, Bitcoin proposals uh, have worked on segregated witness, taproot, uh, a number of other things over time. Uh, very happy to be here. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can hear you. Oh, excellent. Okay. I'm Corey Fields. I work for the MIT DCI. I'm the, the resident uh, paranoid security person there, so <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry I'm not in the room today, but I, I feel like that's kind of on brand for me at least. Um, I've, I've worked on, on Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin Core for uh, since 2013, I guess. I, I uh, have bounced around a bit. I was at the, found, at the Bitcoin Foundation. Uh, and I'm now here at the MIT DCI. Uh, I haven't been active uh, or, or as active on Bitcoin Core in the last year or so. I've, I've been kind of uh, zoomed out and, and trying to look at, at more long lasting initiatives and uh, uh, ultimately, I, I don't think I'm, I'm contributing all that well but that way, so I'm hoping to get more, more back into core uh, at, at kind of active day-to-day -day development. So I, I won't be speaking much as, as to what's kind of going on on day-to-day on -day stuff because I don't feel like I'm, I'm all that well informed, but I'm happy to, to chime in as to kind of past and process stuff. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, so. Uh, Amiti, I know you've been uh, working on a lot of the peer-to-peer um, -peer networking layer. Um, what 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 peer-to-peer -peer networking changes are you most excited about? Um, yeah, so in general, I've been thinking a lot about the peer-to-peer -peer network and find it a really fascinating space. Uh, I think it's um, really enjoyable to try to understand the high-level design goals and link that to the decisions being made in the code base. So a lot of my focus on learning is trying to understand the context of decisions that are already there and different um, uh, interactions of such a complicated distributed system. Um, but there are also a lot of changes that are exciting that are occurring now. So m the majority of my time and focus is spent on a project I've been working on to improve 
transaction privacy in uh, the way that we rebroadcast transactions. Um, but another change that I'm excited about has been proposed by Hibasto and wor um, works to improve uh, eclipse attacks, which I think you might be very familiar with. Um, and so we're still trying to make the network more robust. And his specific PR uh, introduces anchor connections, which involve uh, persisting some existing connections to disks so that when you start up, you can uh, connect back to them, which um, can help prevent being eclipsed. So I find those really fun and have been taking a look at that lately. Very cool. Um, uh, Peter, uh, like there's a lot of excitement around uh, Taproot. Um, I know we had a earlier discussion of it. Um, what's the like? Uh, what's the what's 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 the status like? Um, yeah. So. Um, I think we're pretty much done with the proposal from the perspective of the author. So we've been working with a small group of people, including Anthony Downs, uh, Jonas Nick, Tim Ruffing, and a number of other contributors. Um, there's been lots of feedback. Uh, Optech organized this um, structured review session um, that brought in initially I think over 100 people. Um, after that, it dropped a bit. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it, it was a long time commitment. I think it was uh, seven weeks long, ev every week going through various parts of the proposal. Uh, but it was a lot of very good feedback that we got. Um, we're still making a few small changes. Um, but apart from that, I think we're pretty much done with the proposal. and. Uh, where it goes from there is, is very much up to the community, I think. Um, like, uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy to see the excitement uh, around a proposal and hear talk about it all the time, which I think are very good signs. Um, but we'll see. So, uh, so like uh, opening it up to everyone, um, what changes to Bitcoin Core are, um, are you most excited about? Um, talked about uh, anchor connections. Um, uh, are there any changes that uh, you feel have like flown under the radar that y you're personally really excited about, but um, uh, you don't think gets enough attention or just hasn't uh, broken through? Um, So I'm I'm happy to chime in there. There's uh, there's some some work from uh, uh, Michael Ford and from uh, uh, Carl Dong that that I'm I'm excited about. That I, I think it's it's not the sexiest type of work. It's it's the the, the type of work that I've done for, for the most part on on or, or my involvement in Bitcoin Core has been for the most part this this kind of plumbing build system how it all comes together type of work. And uh, that they've they've started taking on a lot of that work. So Michael Ford wrote, wrote up a, a blog post recently about um, uh, the just the, the sheer amount of of size of the binary size that's been reduced lately, or, or that's been eliminated lately in, in Bitcoin core releases as, as a result of, of a lot of his effort of uh, stripping out unnecessary code, unnecessary libraries, unnecessary parts of libraries. Um, I, I think that that's a really neat effort because it, it allows us to kind of zoom in on exactly what parts of code, what, what libraries we need to be uh, paying attention to. And, and along, along the same lines, um, Carl Dong is working on, on making uh, Bitcoin Core work and, and, and compile fully and deterministically in Geek, which is a really cool project that, that takes, uh, you can imagine taking like one of, one of the earliest compilers that ever existed, it's compiling every, every compiler along along the way to get to a, a modern day compiler and then using that to compile Bitcoin code or I'm sorry Bitcoin core the result being a, a kind of provably deterministic and, and provably non backdoor code base which is um, it's a monumental effort for for almost zero payoff which is which is what's really interesting about the project because it's, it's something that we can kind of say you know check off and say is done um, and and it's, it's I think it's a sign of a mature project to 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 have some people that are going to to that effort just to, to kind of do something once to, to prove the security of something. So I, I think those are both really neat efforts. 
Yeah, um, Bitcoin Core is, uh, unlike many other projects, it, and it's very focused on security. If we get something wrong, then people lose money. Or if you get something else wrong, we destroy an entire economy. And um, the work that Michael Ford and Carl Dong are doing on the build systems and security of those things, those things is really important. Um, I host a monthly event called BitDevs where we talk about news in, in Bitcoin and other crypto systems. And every month we talk about a project that has had a malicious dependency in, injected into it or something wrong with the build system. And we look at those things and we really don't want, that, really don't want that, that to happen to Bitcoin. So the things that Carl is doing with deterministic and reproducible builds um, adds a lot of um, confidence to us distributing this project. So like uh, Corey said, it's really important. And it's stuff that does not necessarily um, get talked about very much, but it's really, really important. So that's, that's good stuff. And like any other software projects, there's always stuff going on that users are probably not aware of, but is very important. Things like improving the internal interfaces between different modules, refactors, cleaning up, improving the testing. And just in the time that I've been working on the project over the last three years, the testing has really come on remarkably well. Um, our functional tests are much better. We have fuzz testing, unit tests have improved. Um, so all of that unglamorous stuff, I think, is very, I'm started very by writing a test framework. I, I, should, I should chime in. A, a, a lot of this is a result of, of uh, John's original work. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so Bitcoin Core has a, a whole bunch of components to it. And in, 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 it, it feels strange to, to talk about, oh, well, what is the thing that excites you most? Because it, it's like, it, it really depends on what kind of thing you're talking about. Like, um, if, if we're talking about, for example, the peer-to-peer -peer protocol implementation, I'm pretty excited to see some um, work, recent work there. there there's uh, Amiti's work on the rebroadcasting logic um, that I think will help with a lot of things. Um, Suhas has, has recently been working on, on uh, things like package relay and um, WTXID based uh, relay, which should uh, avoid a whole bunch of annoying issues that, that we'll probably run into later otherwise. Um, there is also Erlay by uh, Gleb um, and myself on uh, improving the, the bandwidth of uh, usage for the for transaction relay without really uh, like get, getting rid of uh, that being proportional to the number of connections. So that should allow us to have a much, uh, much more strongly connected uh, node graph, uh, some really cool technology going on there. Um, on, on, for example, the wallet side, I'm, I'm excited about things like um, um, the scriptor wallets, um, which is something Andy is working on. Um, there's really a big effort to, to revamp the idea of what a wallet is and how we, uh, like it, it, it will give us uh, automatically support for hardware wallets, multi-sig, uh, with integration of things like uh, mini scripts that we, we could automatically support much more complex scripts and, and uh, just seeing the the functionality of Bitcoin script that it's had all along actually become usable in that way uh, at least within Bitcoin core but hopefully it affects other projects too and, and gets us interaction uh, that's also something I'm really excited about yeah I think um, Bitcoin is interesting because of these reasons where there's new features, but then there's also this constant security attitude and how to make things more robust. Um, so I think Peter gave a good overview of uh, developments in, well, in general, but also in the P2P um, that I'm excited about. And I think one area that I'm curious to learn more about and see more thought put into is about how we treat the network as a whole. So Suhas recently introduced the idea of blocks-only connections. Um, and 
Historically, we've always used the same network to propagate transactions and blocks and address messages and um, all of this information together. Uh, but I think that in a long-term vision of Bitcoin, uh, that doesn't necessarily have to be the way that makes the most sense. And so breaking out these blocks relay only connections is a move towards creating um, networks that deliver different kinds of messages. Um, and that helps, like that created a groundwork where you can persist those, um, those connections as anchors and because of the nuance of trade-offs of, um, so, okay, I'm getting a little in the weeds, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think that there's just really interesting characteristics and a uh, different set of trade-offs that can occur as we extract what um, different networks are delivering to one another. So there's been a lot of um, discussion around uh, adding new opcodes um, and using uh, Taproot as a way of adding new opcodes. Um, uh, I know I know many people have like the secret wish list of opcodes they they would love to see in there. Um, and I'm curious if uh, any of the panelists have any, uh, you know, um, op codes they would really love to see in uh, Bitcoin. I'm going to start this. Um, there is no secret wish list that I hold, but I'm pretty excited to hear about. Uh, there's already so many different ideas, and I think as we move forward with some of these changes, just the vastness of uh, possibilities that are already. Uh, kind of building momentum is really exciting. Yeah, there, there are lots of interesting proposals. The one I'm most interested in is Schnorr Taproot. So <laughs> um, I'm not going to answer your question. I, I'm going to answer the question that I want to answer, which is what am I excited about Schnorr Taproot? Um, I don't think we need things by itself, it's really exciting. You can build a lot of things with Schnorr Taproot just using the, the linear property of Schnorr and doing things like threshold signatures, aggregate signatures, um, and the way you can use that in Lightning, using payment points, um, paying for signatures. So there's a huge space to explore before we even start talking about the next thing, um, whatever that is. Uh, so, sorry, I'm not gonna talk about opcodes, I'm gonna talk about the thing I'm excited about. So I obviously agree with John. Um, <laughs> I, I think uh, another point is that um, one of the changes included in, in Taproot, I think, is a, is a much better extension mechanism to make it easier to introduce new opcodes. So uh, we can go into that for a second. The, the, the traditional way of, of introducing new opcodes that's been around for a while is through OpNOP. Op which are opcodes that don't do anything, and they can be redefined to do anything as long as it has no effects, which uh, pretty much means you can turn it in from an opcode that always does nothing to an opcode that either does nothing or aborts. Uh, th this is what uh, has led to things like op uh, check lock time verify, op uh, check sequence verify, uh, which, uh, Re remarkably don't even pop, pop their argument from the stack. Uh, no, so that, that's the explanation for that. And we're, we're really restricted in what you can do in trying to uh, harness new functionality in these verify style opcodes. So with, with Taproot, or rather the, the script improvements that we propose within Taproot, uh, called TapScript, uh, is the fact that, that these a whole bunch of opcodes are redefined from having no effect to automatically succeeding. And uh, the nice thing about automatically succeeding is that you can redefine it to do anything in a software compatible way, because literally anything is uh, compatible with that. Um, so that I'm not gonna go in, into any specific proposals. I, I think there, there's interesting use cases around uh, more um, covenant style um, transactions or the, the ability for script to uh, enforce conditions on the spending transaction, but it, it's, it's also a fairly philosophically invasive thing. Um, 
for, for example, we currently have pretty much the property that any two outputs, any two UTXOs that have been created anywhere through any means, like if, if you have a way to spend one output and I have a way to spend another output, then we can uh, together construct one transaction that spends both at the same time. And the, this is the sort of property you want for CoinJoin. And really any kind of interesting use of a scripting language that can introspect transactions breaks this, pro the, this property because you effectively get to observe within the scripts the other things that get spent. Uh, I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Uh, the, there are really cool things that can be done with um, covenants, uh, vault constructions, and, and so forth. Um, but it's something to keep in mind that it, it, it may represent a big philosophical break. So the, the question was about new opcodes. Uh, new opcodes terrify me. So I, I don't have have any that I'm especially excited about. What 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 does excite me though is the the um, the effort and and rigor that seem to go that, that, that seems to go into uh, the, the the bits and the discussions lately. So um, looking back at some of the older proposals, some some older bits, as you know, the, the way that some things got forked in is is a little laughable now. Uh, you know that, that some, some things would just never work. So it, it's it's to me a really good sign of the, the way that we are are kind of maturing and coming together and 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 forming these processes as kind of uh, in, in in order to come to better better products. I, I, in, in having a, a discussion with Peter, it's, I think it's what really sealed it to me. And in, in looking back at the um, at the the, the segwit bits. As, as they were, they were kind of just descriptive of the code. Whereas when when you look at the, the current um, uh, Taproot and and, and Schnorr bit, uh, the, the the way that, that features are coming in now um, feels like it has a lot of academic rigor to it, and I I, I, I really like seeing that. So it, it, it wouldn't be any new uh, op code that I would be excited about. It, it would be the 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 kind of hopefully new sense of comfort that comes comes with. Uh, uh, adding it in, that, that, that would be nice, I think. So, uh, so I've heard um, uh, people discussing, and I was wondering if anyone wanted to elaborate um, on uh, the difference between um, Bitcoin development and Bitcoin core development. Um, uh, if there is any difference, uh, what that difference is? Between Sorry. Bitcoin and Bitcoin Core development. When you say Bitcoin development, you mean on the application layer or? Or the, like the protocol layer, like the. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Bitcoin is a protocol and Bitcoin Core is a project that implements that protocol. Um, so we don't make changes to Bitcoin, the protocol very often at all. The most recent one was SegWit, which happened two or three years ago. And we imagine the next one will be Schnorr Taproot, but we have no way of enforcing that or telling you that that is definitely going to happen. So those, those changes happen slowly in comparison to a software project. But if you zoom out, you can argue they happen quite quickly. Um, if you're talking about redesigning money, which doesn't happen very much. Um, Bitcoin Core is, is a software project. So changes are happening all the time. You know, PRs opening every day and being merged every day. Um, but it's different from other software projects. We have a very, very security focused mindset um, or the people who work on Bitcoin Core value security and robustness very highly. So look, I think, well, a lot of depends on, on how you answer the question, what is Bitcoin? Um, if you think it, it, like, there's obviously the consensus rules, uh, which is what John just talked about. And uh, there's, there's probably more things that can be considered Bitcoin that are still not Bitcoin Core, like peer-to-peer -peer protocol uh, is, is a good one. Like the, every implementation of the protocol interacts and needs to keep interacting, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, of course, at the same time, th there is a, an overlap, I think, between uh, people who are active within the Bitcoin Core project and those who are driving protocol development of, of various scale. But it, as John says, it, it's a very different world. Like, I, 
I think I, I see my job as, as, as both, but a, a separate things. Like that there's like, you know, go comment on code review for, for various changes, like someone introducing a new test or, or uh, changing how our internal wa wallet works is, is a very different consideration from uh, h how do we think nodes talk to each other and come to consensus. I think it's good to keep these as, think of these as separate things. Um, I find it really interesting how many different ways there are to contribute to advancing Bitcoin as an ecosystem. Um, and Bitcoin Core is one of them, and that's the one that I focus on. But there are, like, like the mailing list has discussions of all sorts of ideas that might be looking on a totally different time scale. Like, five years out or 10 years out, or um, there's academic research that I think is really important to look at. Um, Neha was chatting last night about how she's, I, I'm not sure who she's working with, but um, trying to participate in mining pools and monitor the behavior of what expectations they're setting by running other nodes to analyze that and make sure that um, the information they're giving the miners uh, match up. And I think that's like a really interesting angle that I hadn't quite thought about before. Um, so there's so many different angles of development. And uh, even in software projects like, like Bitcoin Core has dependencies and it's important who maintains those. And sometimes those come from people who are within the Bitcoin world, but there's dependencies outside of that too. Um, so I think that there's so many different angles in that. We really need a lot of uh, people thinking critically about different parts of the system for it to all come together and work well. Thanks. Um, so I remember when I started looking at um, uh, Bitcoin Core, the networking code hadn't been, um, like people weren't working on it that much. There wasn't uh, that, you know, the changes were very far and uh, few between. And now when I look at it, I see that there's like all this awesome activity happening um, on networking and it's really exciting. And I wonder what other parts of Bitcoin currently are like being um, neglected that could like use a lot of attention. Is there some area where you're like, I wish people would just really look at this and it's just hasn't, hasn't had uh, many changes. Well, Bitcoin Core has a GUI. I don't know if you're aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's made by engineers, and it's pretty obvious it's made by engineers. It's, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, you know, w maybe one day that will be extracted into its own project. Maybe there will be different front ends that you can put on top of Bitcoin Core. Um, but I think if we want Bitcoin Core to be a consumer product or application, um, we need a better GUI. So any designers out there, please work on the GUI. Nothing really comes to mind for me. Um, the, it, it's definitely true that if, if you look over the years, that there have been you know, waves of, you know, th this, this aspect gets a lot of attention and other things less so, and, and this changes. And uh, it's also always whenever there's like a group of people excited around a certain thing, then, then much more happens. It, it, but I can't really think of a specific thing right now. Yeah, it's hard for me to comment on what seems neglected, but it feels uh, very apparent to me that um, almost every single aspect of Bitcoin Core could use more like critical thinking and people uh, inspecting it carefully. So, like moving on from that, like if someone does, uh, if someone does want to get involved in Bitcoin uh, core development. Um, how should they go about doing that? What are some uh, tips and tricks? I saw there was some from um, some of the earlier talks. Uh, yeah, how, 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 how get involved in development? Well, I have a lot of thoughts on this. And if you're interested in all of them, I wrote them up into a blog post. It's called Onboarding to Bitcoin Core. Um, so I would recommend reading that. Uh, but I guess maybe one or two that I can try to distill is that 
I think that focus is really important. Um, there's just so much exciting development in the space. So really carving out what you are interested in um, and attending to understanding that in depth is uh, crucial. So I've focused on Bitcoin Core and for me that means like just looking at the code and getting familiar with the repo and um, trying to understand how people are making changes or uh, different attack vectors and see what is already there and understand the context of why um, so that when I do make changes, they can be meaningful. Um, and yeah, and play the long game, like invest in your own growth and learning and see where you can, um, like along your learning curve, where you can make meaningful changes. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing. Like there's so much low hanging fruit for small improvements that do help the system become more robust. And it's been a really amazing experience um, to onboard into the ecosystem. And I found that people have been very supportive, like the Bitcoin Core devs have been um, just so generous with teaching me and uh, mentoring me and giving me feedback. And I've been like wonderfully surprised to see what a supportive culture it's been. So I definitely think that if you're interested in working hard and investing time and thinking critically, um, that there's a lot of ways that anyone can contribute. Um, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about this and I could happily talk for the remaining 20 minutes about how people can get involved in Bitcoin development. Um, Amiti came to our residency last year and that is something that we do at Chaincode and value very highly. We, we think the residency is one of the best things we do, or I think the residency is one of the best things we do at Chaincode, um, where we bring developers who are passionate and want to work hard on Bitcoin Core and we give them the tools and the knowledge they need to be, able to be effective contributors to the project. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll also echo what Amiti said about um, it being a very welcoming project. Um, Bitcoin as a whole sometimes has a reputation of being unwelcoming, but I, I haven't found that to be the case in Bitcoin Core. Um, I found the developers in Bitcoin Core over my three years contributing to be very, very generous with their time and expertise. So if you come in um, and want to help and respect people's time, they will welcome that and they will show you how to help and give you their time. Um, in terms of practical things, I think there's no substitute for getting into the code. And the best way to do that is to review the code, review PRs, uh, look at what people are changing. Um, I think an ineffective way to contribute as a new starter would be to come in and open PRs and say, I'm here to fix everything, come and review my code. A more effective way would be to look at other people's changes and try and help them get their co code merged and through that, understand the code base better. Um, I host a weekly review club on Wednesdays on IRC, so if you want to learn about the review process, you can go to bitcoincore.reviews and um, I will help you start reviewing PRs. Yeah, just to add to that, I think it, if your goal is learning, um, an, an ineffective way is uh, try to dive in and understand how everything fits together. There's, there's a lot of breadth everywhere and you, you like you, you, you cannot go you know, depth first into everything and, and you'll, you'll get dragged down in the details. So I think a, a, a better way of learning is, is pick one thing you wanna work on. Like don't really necessarily expect to, to uh, end up with a PR or so on, but just see, hey, l let me see, can I find out how I would do this? Um, oh, of course, if you, once you get to, you know, I, I'd like to, actually contribute and, and make changes here and there. I agree, participating in review and see what other people are working on is, is essential. Uh, I, I agree with everything that was said. I think those are, those are three great answers. Um, what, one of the biggest things is that it, it is important to really get in with, with the people and, and the community. I, I, I think pretty much everyone alluded to this before. You just start opening pull requests before you before you dive in and, and start asserting that, that you know everything. Um, it, it, it's, it's 
clear to the reviewers. It's clear to the people in the project who's in it. Just you know, the, the, like one one common pattern, for example, is somebody that wants wants to commit in Bitcoin Core. Uh, those pull requests are very obvious to spot. It's it's easy to see the the people that are putting in the work and and the people that are are interested in really like helping out and collaborating versus the, the people who are, are are just interested in getting something in quickly. And so you're you're much likely to get a good response if you know you're 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 proving to be one of those people who's kind of in it for uh, like playing playing the long game. So so John, you would say uh, um, a PR review club and chain code re uh, residency. Thanks, Ethan. Um, I told Ethan that <laughs> given half a chance, I would show my projects. One is the chain code residency. Um, we are running the next one in June, so if you are an engineer and you want to be contributing to Bitcoin or Lightning open source projects, um, you should apply to our residency. Applications close on the 15th of March. Go to residency.chainco.com. And the other project that I wanted to share was my PR review club. Um, I shouldn't say my, our PR review club. Um, and that is at bitcoincore.reviews. So if you want to learn about the Bitcoin Core code base, the best way is to review PRs and um, come to that review club on Wednesdays on IRC, and we will help you learn how to review PRs. John, you're not going to show Optech? <laughs> <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> well, OK, I will. <laughs> Optech is great. They have a couple different initiatives, but they send out a weekly newsletter uh, written by Dave Harding. And I think it's the best way to stay up to date with technical developments in like the protocol and the mailing list and the space. Um, he puts all the hard work of parsing what's happening and distilling it into understandable language. So that's how I stay up to date. Um, and I really recommend it. Bitcoinops.org. <laughs> Thanks. So Bitcoin's been around for a while. We can look back to um, uh, 2010 to now and see what's changed. Um, and so taking that experience and looking forward, um, what is everyone's thoughts on like um, uh, five to 10 years from now? What has changed? If anything, will it look mostly like what we have now? Or is there going to be anything that's really unexpected that you think will, uh, will have occurred? Or is, is the sort of current um, uh, things that we're discussing now likely to be the feature set in, say, uh, 2030? Well, um, I'm sure unexpected things will happen, but I can't tell you which. Uh, <laughs> um, more, more seriously, um, I, I think a lot of what we do now will affect how we do things in the future. And that, that is something to keep in mind. Like the, uh, a, a lot of, you know, things around incentives and expectations in Bitcoin uh, are based on you know, what, what people expect them to be. Like, uh, for, for, for example, um, soft forks are hard when people think they are hard, and that's an enormously valuable property. Um, and, and thinking about them that way and, and like how we deal with that now probably affects how we uh, will think about them in 10 years. Um, and so, just good to keep in mind. Uh, uh, Corey mentioned earlier the difference between consensus changes a few years ago and con consensus changes now. Um, back in 2012, I believe, APR was merged into Bitcoin Core called OpEval, which was a consensus change, and it was bugged. It, it was terribly bugged. And then it got reverted before it was released into, it was in a release. Um, that wouldn't happen today. We, we don't make changes like that. We have a far better review process within Bitcoin Core. We have a far better process outside uh, within the general community talking about consensus changes. Um, I think Schnorr Taproot, what we've seen, well, B Bitcoin is an open source project. No one is directing it. No one should do anything. Um, but I think the actions we've seen around Schnorr Taproot, um, the review that AJ started on IRC, um, things that we've done in Optech, discussions on the mailing list have been better than, sh better than SegWit. Um, and I think the next one will be better still. 
So we've seen a maturation of the processes that will continue. Everything I look at, I think the process is improving. We've got more full-time people working on Bitcoin Core. They're more distributed. Um, and I just hope that as the project matures over another 10 years, we'll see a continuation of that. Um, I'm curious to see, OK, I guess I'm curious to see what happens and how it develops <laughs> as a whole. Um, but I also think there's a lot of moving towards um, modularity of components within the code base. And I think that that will help um, scale in terms of who is able to review, who is able to contribute, and ensuring safety. Um, historically, there have been a lot of, uh, it's all intertwined. Um, so you might think you're making changes to one part of the code, but then something elsewhere fails. And so as we move towards um, more modularity, there will just be an increase in safety. Um, and I think that in the long term, that can really lend itself to a lot more creative of development. Oh, OK. Also, I hope that there are more women. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I, for one thing, I'm also pro women, but, but also uh, for, for modularity here. Um, this, this, is, this is actually something that I've been spending a, a lot of time uh, thinking about over the years is, is what Bitcoin Core as a project looks like in, in 10 years. And uh, I, I think that, that modularity is, is extremely important and, and that like, uh, it, it, it helps with review. It helps with uh, it, it helps with getting people with you know domain specific knowledge. It's it, it just a, a, a better way of doing it all along. Unfortunately, it's, it's kind of in conflict with this other other problem that Bitcoin Core has, which is that uh, everything in the kitchen sink ends up inside of Bitcoin Core. So you know we we, we end up kind of owning our dependencies, owning our uh, uh, I, I've, I've given a, a talk called "Everything Is Broken" about how we basically inherit uh, the, the whole the whole compiler stack. Um, so you know we have our, our, our compiler, our dependencies, our, our, our all of this stuff that we also have to contend with while we're trying to modularize and while we're trying to, to move away from all that stuff. So uh, I, I think it's, it's possible that we see kind of two parallel efforts. Number one bringing more things in under our roof and under our control. And, and number two, uh, segmenting the things that we do have control of and kind of separating those from the, the things that we don't. So I, I think that'll be, uh, like that's, that's been, been the, 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 the trend in, in core development for a long time. And I think that, that will continue. Thanks. So I'm gonna turn it over to uh, questions. So if you'd like to ask a question, line up at uh, one of the two microphones. I came to this because uh, I was interested in Bitcoin core development and what you just said in the last 15 minutes kind of answered all my questions. So thank you very much for that. I want to ask a question about something you have you just kind of just touched on. One of the miracles of Bitcoin is how it came into being without direction by mysterious origin. And now that's all in the past and now it continues to be run without like a head. And political systems tend to um, with this power to be gained, somebody gains the power, and yet you've maintained a, a political structure that doesn't seem to be corrupted. And I'm wondering if you can just comment on how that is, how that comes about. <laughs> and also, this a correlated question is wherever, wherever there's something to be gained, somebody tries to game it. And like we have one very famous crackpot who's claimed to have parts of this. But uh, how do you avoid those problems also? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a really interesting question, and I don't have any good answers, but it's something I wonder and think about as well. I think in human organizational systems, we do see a very hierarchical model and um, people striving to be on the top of the triangle. Uh, but one model that I find really interesting is how ants organize, and it feels a lot like open source development. Um, and so basically, ants have this kind of 
when they're seeking food, it's kind of random, and when they find something yummy, they release pheromones, and that attracts other ants. And the amount of pheromones they release is a proportion of how big the feast they found. And so somehow this leads to an organization where you like then see lines of ants like eating you know, the leftover you accidentally spilled. And they're able to <laughs> cart that away to, and share, share the, the feast. Um, so I think this is kind of like open source development. <laughs> <laughs> where uh, if there's something that you're really excited about and a change that you're passionate about seeing, um, you, gotta, you gotta just go with it and share that enthusiasm and other people get attracted to it if it makes sense to them and they're feeling that energy as well. And then somehow like things maybe work out, hopefully. <laughs> Pheromone-driven development. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we're very lucky in Bitcoin that there's a community of people who really, really care about Bitcoin to a, an absurd extent, um, including all the people on this panel in front of you. Um, they wouldn't let us get away with anything. They, people are watching Bitcoin Core, people are watching the Bitcoin developers, and if anyone in Bitcoin Core tries to do anything fishy, then they'll stop running Bitcoin Core. I, so, to answer your question, I think it is challenging like the the um the fact that development evolves and, and we're lucky it has happened and and to the point where, where we got them thanks to a community of of very interested and excited people but it it does come with downsides like i i think uh and this this, this is a fundamental trade-off like like development isn't as efficient or as streamlined as it could be with a more directed uh Leadered, is that a word? Uh, led approach, um, and and th this this leads to to frustrations. People who don't know how to push forward on the changes they would like to see, and and um, but at the same time, I think this is this is inevitable, and it's good to be aware of of those trade offs. Um, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, I think in some ways it's much more inefficient, but in other ways it actually could be more efficient. Um, for example, I've worked at companies that are startups in SF where the CEO has changed their mind from one week to the next, and so <laughs> everything that we did that week uh, didn't matter because we didn't finish, and next week we had a new mandate. And this is not a unique phenomena. Um, and so there, it's hard to say what is better in the long run, but there are definitely huge trade-offs, and sometimes that can be frustrating. But in other ways, it's so important. I think we have time for one more, maybe two more questions. Um, <laughs> try try to make it fast. Um, my question for any of the core devs that want to answer is how much on-chain analytics um, informs your priorities or development work, SegWit famously took a long time to get adoption. Um, maybe Taproot will take a long time to get adoption, but we are seeing a lot more um, you know, anchoring and other types of transactions going on. And whether you look at you know, the state of the network and chain data to inform, prioritize, or get feedback. So I, I've personally looked at, at things like distribution of, of um, what kind of scripts, what, what, like how much P2SH, how, how much uh, single key, multi-sig uh, variations. And this, this definitely influences um, decisions around what, what is worthwhile to, to work on. And um, like if, if you take incentives into account, it, it matters whether you can say like, this is actually going to make things cheaper for, for people for a majority uh, um, or not, um, and and I, I think that route will definitely take a long time to be adopted, and I think that's fine. We're in it for the long run. Maybe one last question. Hi, John mentioned the GUI being a component that might need more work. On a greater theme, I think the user experience design is 
lacking in Bitcoin and is maybe a reason people don't use it. Where is somewhere in open source development? Possibly Bitcoin, probably Bitcoin, but maybe beyond that you've seen user experience design succeed or fail? Mm. Um, I think Square does a pretty good job at user experience. Um, the, the cash app in terms of making stacking sats pretty easy. Um, Is that open source? Oh, that's not open source. Um, in terms of open source projects in Bitcoin with good UX. I and use a command line. Command line. <laughs> <laughs> It's a difficult problem, I think. Um, I guess that answers the an area that can use a lot more attention question. <laughs> yep. Thank you. All right, so I, I, I lied and we have time for one more question. So if whoever was standing up there can. Uh... <laughs> so it's actually funny that uh, there was just a question about uh, user research I was going to ask about. Um, sort of parlaying off the last question, what, in what capacity could user researchers look to contribute to Bitcoin Core? Since it's a very engineering-driven approach, it takes a very engineering-led um, process in order to contribute. So how might someone who's done user testing or uh, just independently thought about this look to contribute? Would it be through the GitHub page? Would it be through writing articles? Um, would love to hear your thoughts on this. <laughs> uh, our, our, our silence should be <laughs> informative. Um, I, I, I think it, it's a hard question to answer as, as I think the majority of the contributors aren't very good at this. And, and in, in, input would be welcome, but it, it's hard to find, you know, uh, overlap. Uh, well, yeah. I think there's a lot of ways that uh, the two uh, different fields could come together well, but I don't think those are very well defined at the moment. So I don't have like an answer offhand, but if you, if you want to chat more about it and brainstorm, I'd be happy to. Great. Yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>